Good morning, you ppoptionmillionaires.com, May 29, 2014. So Thursday is about 20 minutes before the market's going to open. I do a quick market video here. It's the QQQ, and you can see there's a five-year weekly chart. I was talking about this broadening descending wedge, and we were going to break out of it to the upside, and sure enough, we did. Uh, a lot of people were looking at this possible head and shoulders pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Yeah, that's gone now. Gone, just like back in 2010. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder, gone. I mean, we were down at 45 when that was going on. We're now at 90. We've doubled since then. Uh, who knows where we're going to go from here? But if you look at the trend, I <laughs> put the odds at higher prices because that's the way the market's going. You want to sit there and try and fight it every day? You can, sure. Just continue to fight it and eventually you're going to be right. But <laughs> I'm not sure you're going to have any money left to be shorting the market at that time. Uh, so let's look from a shorter term perspective you can see we're bumping up against the the march high that we hit uh we pulled back from it we're down a third of a percent so that's good to see too a marketplace that doesn't go up every day uh, pull back every so often hey, keeps a modicum of reality in this marketplace we have bonds rallying with stocks which is kind of baffling everyone uh the bond market is doing well well bid up 1.2 percent on the tlt the 20-year bond etf uh, so bonds are being bought stocks are being bought they're going up at the same time and i put this up in a post yesterday the fact that really over the last six months and you can see bonds have really been bought since the start of this year the taper talk uh turned into real honest to goodness tapering from the federal reserve yet bonds are being bought so it really defies logic just like this marketplace nobody logically uh, can wrap their minds around buying all-time highs until the all-time highs become higher all-time highs and higher all-time highs at some point, we're going to get just a, an irrational rally. But uh, right now, it seems like the, the jockey is pulling back the reins every so often, like yesterday. And the market uh, is doing a nice slow melt-up, which is good. It's healthy. That gives the opportunity for people to sell and people to buy uh, in a very healthy marketplace. Of course, we have volatility uh, pulling back. And everybody's thinking, look at the VXX, pretty much record lows. Um, everybody's thinking that since the VXX now near... Uh, historic lows that we're going to see some sort of uh, a bounce as, as we've seen each time it gets down to about this 11 uh, level uh, back in 2007 it hit 10 um, you can see the rallies it's had it's had these pops but these these moves to the upside have become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until we just I think we're just going to break down um, you can see we've had some pops back in 2002 and 2004 and they just get smaller and smaller and smaller and uh, yeah, eventually we're going to get a spike like this again, but who knows when it's going to happen. Uh, the timing is everything there, and why not just go with the trend until we start to see stocks uh, crack. And you see each time we've gotten into channels, the S&P 500, ETF, the spiders, uh, we've gotten a channel here at the start of October, and this is just the, the nine-month daily. We're in, another, we're in another channel since March, and now it looks like we're breaking into another channel. I think to me the worst that we'll see is a pull back down to this 188 level if if, if at all that happens and we're just going to channel we're going to consolidate into the summer and individual names are going to go higher just like we have Twitter up 12 percent over the last uh, day and a half and some names are going to go lower it's going to be a nice little trading market place for the individual names but as far as uh, a market crash coming I don't know I just don't see it happening just yet uh, so let's look at some earnings we have big lots reporting earnings before the bell tomorrow uh, last earnings report, we saw a big spike. Actually, I was all over this at the blog at optionmillionaires.com. If you want to look for it, uh, just type in big into the search at uh, Option Millionaires, and you can see we had a 23% move to the upside last earnings report. But it looks like we're rolling over a bit here. Uh, I'm not so sure we're going to see that kind of a big move to the upside. I think it's going to be a little more muted action. So it's big lots before the bell. I'm not going to trade this. I'm just merely pointing out its earnings report. We also have Express reporting earnings uh, after the bell today as well as guess i'm not going to guess which way it's headed but it is below uh, support so we could see a pullback we had a and f report earnings this morning it's up nine percent but it's basically uh, a stock that's heavily shorted it could move swiftly in either direction it's up what seven or nine percent this morning the earnings report they reported a loss but it wasn't as bad as expected i think uh, that's why it's higher Let's look at some charts. We have Apple. A lot of analysts coming out today, continue, you know, continuing the trend of, of moving the price targets up on the stock. You can see this W bottom, bottom I was talking about uh, in the middle of last year, starting in May, really. And you can see we've broken out a lot of really nice flagging patterns. 
Uh, wedges, this most recent wedge that we broke out of to the upside, beautiful. And I think at some point uh, towards the end of this year, we're going to test the all-time highs. I'm not sure that's going to happen before the split. But needless to say, it doesn't matter what price it happens at, split adjusted or not. Uh, I think we're to come up to this uh, former high, it was over 700 bucks, very briefly back in September 2012. Uh, some of the casinos I think I just saw come across, Wynn Resorts uh, was downgraded. Um, we have Las Vegas Sands was down uh, yesterday, but recovered a lot of its losses to actually push into positive territory. This pattern here looks like a topping pattern. Uh, we have support here at about the $72 level. We have possibly a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. Uh, it's kind of uh, not completely visible because it's it's not a perfectly formed right shoulder. But nonetheless, we have a, uh, a high, a higher high, and a lower high, uh, which could be a topping pattern here. I like Las Vegas Sands just for a, a bounce up to about the $77.50 level. We'll see if that happens. That would keep this trend line if you drew a trend line let me see if i have my trend line tool up i don't um that'd be something to watch for las vegas sands um twitter twitter love the support here at 30 i was talking about this in my video last week how the volume started to to die down a little bit friday we pulled back about three or four percent and then tuesday we were down a little bit and then yesterday look at the volume same kind of volume we had with the lockup actually not as much but still significant volume compared to uh recent volume and move to the upside over 10%. Uh, analyst out again this morning, upgrading stocks at 34.74. Wow, I mean, big move to the upside. Uh, and then let's move on to Amazon, which has really kind of been struggling a little bit the last uh, I don't know, couple months after it hit its all-time high back at the start of this year. Uh, it's pulled back once, pulled back again, and these are, in. Uh, if you want to invert a bull flag, these are bear flags, okay? So we had a a nice bear flag, another bear flag. Is this another bear flag or, or have we bottomed here? Uh, if you want to look from a shorter term perspective on Amazon, oh, if I can get in, uh, to me, possible inverted head and shoulders, left shoulder, right shoulder, neckline here. Uh, and I'm looking for a move up to 325. Now if we continue to trend to the downside, 280 support. But again, on Friday was a nice move to the upside on Amazon and I'm looking for a nice end of week rally on Amazon. Uh, I had Priceline calls on Friday. Uh, you can look, we broke up to almost a $1,200 level on Friday. Friday, the Priceline stock itself was kind of stagnant. And all of a sudden, late in the session, we just started to melt up um, with a lot of stocks, but Amazon and uh, Netflix as well, with a nice late day rally. And then look, once my options were sold and I didn't have my calls anymore, look what happens the next day. <laughs> uh, Priceline was up, what, 4 5 5%. On Tuesday, moving from the 1200 level, it was up $60. <laughs> That's what happens uh, when you get out of your call contracts. Like, oh, UBB has sold his calls. Let's ramp the stock. Uh, so we have Priceline making a big move. How about Zillow? Uh, JB at OptionMillionaires.com has been behind the stock for uh, oh, quite a while, calling for a breakout to record levels. You see a nice wedge breakout and a broke out from the all time high levels. Looking really good here on Zillow. A lot of it's. I mean, Zillow kind of epitomizes the marketplace, right? Nobody likes it. Nobody likes Zillow. Why is Zillow? Zillow's price earnings ratio doesn't justify its it, the value of the stock, and you know, so many excuses why stocks shouldn't be trading at prices that they are currently trading at. Why not just just grasp hold of it? Just enjoy it. You know, enjoy it while it lasts. Uh, there's a lot of things. You know, life is short. Instead of just whining and complaining about the marketplace, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Thank you, Ben. You know, it took me a while. I didn't like it to start. You know, when this market started to go up for no reason, I didn't like it. I didn't like this marketplace. No, I love it now. I love it. I've, en I've embraced it. All right, UPB here, OptionMillionaires.com. Everyone have a great trading session. I'll see you in the chat room. Hopefully, we have a another fabulous day. Goodbye.